Justice of the Peace Benaja Widdop sat in the doorway of his office, smoking his pipe. The Cumberland Mountains of Tennessee rose blue-gray in the afternoon sky. A bird, a speckled hen, walked down the main street, making foolish sounds. Up the road came the sound of creaking wheels, and then a slow cloud of dust. Then a cart pulled by a bull with Rancy Bilbro and his wife inside. The cart stopped at the justice's door, and the two climbed out. The justice of the peace put his feet back in his shoes, and moved. To let them enter, we all said the woman in a voice like the wind blowing through the pine trees. Wants a divorce. She looked at her husband Rancy to see if he agreed. A divorce, repeated Rancy, with a mournful shake of his head. We all. Can't get along together nohow. It's lonesome enough to live in the mountains when a man and woman care for each other, but when she's a spitting like a wildcat, a man's got no call to live with her. The justice of the peace opened his book of laws, and wiped his eyeglasses. The law, he said. Is silent on the subject of divorce, as far as this court is concerned. But if a justice of the peace can marry two people, it's clear that he can separate them. This here office will give a decree of divorce and stand on it, unless the Supreme Court says otherwise. Rancy Bilbro took a small bag from a pocket in his pants. Out of this, he shook upon the table a five-dollar bill. Sold a bearskin and two foxes for that, he said. It's all the money we've got. The regular price of a divorce in this court, said the justice, is five dollars. He put the bill into the pocket of his coat, as if money meant little to him. Then, with much effort, he slowly wrote the divorce decree on half a sheet of paper, and copied it on the other. Then, he read it aloud: "Know all men that Rancy Bilbro and his wife Ariella Bilbro this day." Personally appeared before me, and promised that hereinafter they will neither love, honor, nor obey each other, neither for better nor worse, they being of sound mind and body, and they accept this decree of divorce according to the peace and dignity of the state. Herein fail not, so help you God. Signed, Benaja Widdop, Justice of the Peace, in and for the County of Piedmont, State of Tennessee. The justice was about to give a copy of the document to Rancy. Judge said, "Ariella, don't you give him that there paper yet? It's not all settled, no how." I got to have my rights first. I got to have my alimony. It's no kind of way for a man to divorce his wife without her having any money. I'm aiming to go to my brother Ed's up on Hogback Mountain. I'm aiming to have a pair of shoes and some other things. If Rance has money enough to get a divorce, let him pay me. Alimony. The woman's feet were bare, and the trail to Hogback Mountain was rough. Ariella Bilbro, the justice asked, 
How much did you expect to be enough alimony in the case before the court? I'm expecting, she answered, for the shoes and all, say five dollars. That ain't much, but I reckon that'll get me to Brother Ed's. The amount, said the justice, is not unreasonable. Rancy Bilbro, you are ordered by the court to pay the amount of five dollars before the decree of divorce is issued. I got no more money, breathed Rancy heavily. I done paid you all I had. Otherwise, said the justice, looking severely over his glasses, you are in contempt of court. I reckon if you give me until tomorrow, Rancy pleaded, I might be able to scrape it up somewhere. I never look to be paying no alimony. Till tomorrow, then, said the justice, starting to loosen his shoes. We might as well go down to Uncle Zai's place and spend the night, decided Rancy. He climbed into the cart on one side, and Ariella climbed in on the other side. The bull slowly pulled them down the road. After they left, Justice of the Peace Benaja Widdup smoked his pipe and read his weekly newspaper until the moon rose. Then it was time to walk home and eat. He lived in the double log cabin on the side of the mountain. Going home, he crossed a little path darkened by a group of trees. Suddenly, a man stepped out and pointed a gun at him. The man's hat was pulled down low, and something covered most of his face. "I want your money," said the man. Without any talk, my finger is a shaking on this here trigger. I've only got f- five dollars," said the justice. "Roll it up," the man ordered, "and stick it in the end of this here gun barrel, and then you can be going along." The justice did as he was told. The next day. The cart stopped once more at the door of the Justice of the Peace. Inside, Rancy Bilbro gave his wife a five-dollar bill. The Justice looked at it sharply. The bill seemed to curl up, as if it had been rolled and stuck into the end of a gun barrel. But the Justice said nothing. He gave each person a decree of divorce. Each stood uneasily silent. I reckon you'll be going back up to the cabin along with the cart," said Ariella. "There's bread in the tin box sitting on the shelf. I put the bacon in the pot to keep the hound dogs from getting it. Don't forget to wind the clock tonight." You're going to your brother Ed's," asked Rancy. "I was expecting to get up there before night. I'm not saying they'll trouble themselves much to make me welcome, but I got nowhere else to go. It's a long way, and I better be going. I'll be saying goodbye, Rance. That is, if you want to." I don't know anybody could be such a hound dog not to want to say goodbye," said Rancy. "Unless you're in such a hurry to get away that you don't want me to say it." Ariella was silent. She carefully folded the five-dollar bill and her divorce decree, and placed them inside the front of her dress. Justice Benaja Widdup watched the money disappear with mournful eyes. His next words showed great sympathy, or something else that was on his mind. 
Be kind of lonesome in the old cabin tonight, Rance, he said. It might be lonesome, Rancy answered. But when folks get mad and want a divorce, you can't make folks stay. There's others wanted a divorce, said Ariella. Besides, nobody don't want nobody to stay. Nobody never said they didn't. Nobody never said they did. I reckon I better start going now to Brother Ed's. Nobody can't wind that old clock. Want me to go back along with you in the cart and wind it for you, Rance? Rancy showed no emotion, but he reached out his big hand and took Ariella's thin one. I reckon I've been mean and low down, said Rancy. You wind that clock, Ariella. My heart's in that cabin with you, Rance, Ariella said quietly. I ain't gonna get mad no more. Let's be starting, Rance, so we can get home by sundown. Justice Widdup stopped them. In the name of the state of Tennessee, I order you not to defy its laws. This court is more than willing to see two loving hearts reunite, but it is the duty of the court to protect the morals of the state. The court reminds you that you are no longer man and wife but are divorced by regular decree. As such, you are not permitted to enjoy the benefits of marriage. Ariella caught Rancy's arm. Did those words mean that she must lose him now when they had just learned the lesson of life? However, said the justice slowly, this court is prepared to remove the divorce decree. It stands ready to perform the ceremony of marriage. The cost for performing said ceremony will be, in this case, five dollars. Ariella smiled. Her hand went quickly to her dress and pulled out the five-dollar bill. She stood hand in hand with Rancy and listened to the reuniting words. Soon after, she and Rancy left for the mountains. Justice of the Peace Benaja Widdup returned to his doorway, took off his shoes, and happily smoked his pipe. Once again, he lovingly fingered the five-dollar bill stuffed into his coat pocket. Once again, the hen walked down the main street, cackling foolishly.